All right, what I what I want to do today is in this packet give you every graph you need to know for the test. So you have like one place to look um, and be able to find it. What's wrong, Evan? You don't think it's a good idea? I'll, I'll stop. Now you're back talking? Holy cow. All right. So the first graph, even though it doesn't say, it says so with like in the middle, it says perfect competition in the long run. There it is, side by side, perfect competition, right in the top box. So it keeps bringing his A game. He was really pumped up today. The music in church was outstanding. Yeah, I know. I don't know why we need all of it. Well, the reason we didn't get it's like a somber man. Oh, you guys did a great job. Like, I was going to get on the microphone. Hey, it looks like you're playing like you want to be here. Uh, even though I got to say, the priest started getting on my nerves. Plus the challenge. He just skipped right over it. Yeah. How many times did he have to go with the lead to look? Yeah. We got it. We got it. We got it. Okay. All right, but otherwise, beautiful mass, beautiful music. Oh, he just, uh, you got a donut? You can't eat before mass. Well, he's not singing. Not singing, he's eating communion. You do say I mean, I jumped to that. I don't know why. Sam, here behind the microphone. Right now, I know. What are you eating? Sage. Huh? It's not sage. No, what are you eating? My lunch. Is that like what? Not like a sandwich. Like, what? you like have an IQ of 150. You can answer the same type of question. Okay, I'm allergic to a lot of things. That's why. Uh, okay, yes, you can eat a roast to be soon. It was peanut butter and jelly. I might have to um, taping this. I can't tell you what I got. <laughs> All right. I want you to know for the lot of thumbs, like a tax, only ATC up, a lump sum subsidy, only ATC down in the short run, because you'd eventually have to get back to the long run. Okay. Remember, Mr. Dar, he's your friend, zero in economic. I just put that there to, to remind you that zero economic profit and normal profit are the same thing. They do like to go with the MC above the ABC as your supply curve. Just keep that in mind. Victor, you're right. This is one of the three graphs that could be um, question one, which is 15 out of the 30 points. So we want to put a star next to this one because there's no way you could walk in without knowing this. I will remind you, but I will also encourage you to watch the video again that I did on anything they could ask in perfect competition and monopolies because we're teeing it up again. Yes, sir. I put it there um, so I could tell you the supply is above the ABC. You would have to draw it. You need to know the shutdown rule, right? Which is if price is below ABC, you shut down. We good here? Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in all the things for the price ceiling, so you know. Like so. Uh, the DWL is dead weight loss. This whole area is consumer surplus, and that's reduced.
Remember, for a ceiling to be binding upside down house, it has to be below the equilibrium. If it's above the equilibrium, it's like it's not there. You just use the equilibrium. Okay. Uh, does everyone have a practice test? Yeah, I guess. So, A is that really good? I don't know. I think it was two days ago. But yes, it is. Above the price, below demand. Yes. Yes. Yes, because it's below the equilibrium, right? You said the sorry. I, I said a lot of things. I didn't basically just ask the question. You said the consumer sure was the A B and Same. Yes. Okay. We good? Did we start at 10, 11.30? We should have Dallas on the day. Like, should should the is the pricing quantity for this graph like the, for the green line, green the red line? Yeah, all right. So the green line is the, is the price ceiling. Where it meets the red line here is what will actually be sold. Right, because even though people want a lot more, suppliers are only supplying that amount. Good question, Deb. That's why we have you here. All right, there we go. Price floor, upside down house. The floor is above the equilibrium to be binding. There, the consumer and producer surplus and deadweight loss are all put in. If it's above the equilibrium, you're going to have a surplus. Below, you're going to have a short. Minimum wage, a lot of times, for the price flow. I'm thinking I'm probably one of the least intelligent teachers. It's going to be hard to be one. And he's got a doctor. Yeah. So he might, I'm not, he might not teach, but he's probably smart. Do you know what I mean? I think sometimes. Being really smart makes it harder to teach because things come, you know, things come easy to you. Like I understand a lot of the traps in econ because they're hard for me. So I figured, you know, like I understand why people don't understand certain things. Um, all right, we good on this? Jose gave me the nod. What math is it, by the way? Oh. Not really like understanding. It's kind of just like giving us like a hundred questions on a website for the three. It's like just sign in the back that you are going to help the students answer the questions. But all right, here's my 15 years of Cal PC. Kids never understand it. Everyone passes the AP exam. Huh? Well, you when talking about <laughs> normal kids. Is it understandable? Huh? Oh, um, yeah. You're, you're in a different sphere. All right. Here we go. Exercise time.
Or just these that's complaining? Yeah, this is the whole okay. As the <laughs> Yeah, All right, let's just do the exercise. <laughs> we could talk about like you know how bad I am. That would be easier. Of course. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think I've told this dissembler during the year that if I was in my fire. <laughs> he goes, why? <laughs> No one's learning. You should say, um, well, that's true of the whole building. <laughs> not no one's learning, not enough people are learning. Hopefully, Jake Crandall learns at 84%. It's a great day today. McDonald's was open. Open. Diet Coke and apple pie. Oh, and the apple pie, they should never do what they did today. They gave me the hot apple pie hot. I now know what it should taste like. It's crazy. We did pray about a miracle today, but it was after I was at McDonald's. Um, is the tax revenue that whole box down to, down to the original supply? That Fifth box, right? Yeah. All right, guys, also remember. If you're looking to find the tax, it's from the new equilibrium straight down to the old supply. Okay. Now it could be from this line to this line, any two lines between the supply curve. Don't go from equilibrium to equilibrium. Where tax revenue is, is actually the consumer tax, and the bottom is the producer tax. Right. All right. When they give you excise taxes, the questions they like to ask is, how big is the tax? How much is the consumer paying? How much is the producer paying? So be able to negotiate that out. Yes? Go. Um, whichever one with the more elastic line pays the bigger run of the tax, right? You have one that's more inelastic. Is that what you said? I said elastic. Inelastic. inelastic. And the reason is, Sam, if it's inelastic and you raise the price, There's it's no not going to change a lot, right? What's up next? All right. Monopoly making money. Second graph you need to know. I mean, you need to know more, but this could be one of the three. Monopoly making money. And I'll give you a second to write that down and then I'll try to highlight the spots. You're going to have to draw a profit or loss box. So, no, it's MC equals MR, say up to demand and down to ATC, but you stay on the same profit maximizing line. The profit maximizer is your best friend. So, um, allocatively efficient, where MC crosses demand. Productively efficient, where MC crosses ATC. Highest total revenue on the axis. Now, I take it up at unit elastic, which is also the highest total revenue. And if I bring it across, that's just the price of the highest total revenue. Okay. Monopolies, when they profit maximize, are always in the elastic part of the curve. Since monopolies are in the elastic part of the curve, if you increase their price, their total revenue decreases. 
If you decrease that price, obviously the total revenue goes up. An excise tax shifts both um, MC and ATC. Remember, you get a new profit maximizer after it shifts MC. Any other questions on the monopoly or points or? So Jenkins, you see a monopoly graph on, on the FRQ. Their eyes are going to light up, right? You're going to go, that's 10, 10 of 10. If I get 100, what's Mr. Bressler going to get to me? An apple, an apple pie. What's the P, is that P and PR? The what? The P and PR. Oh, it's P, it's highest total revenue, HDR. Sorry, my handwriting. I didn't go to Catholic school, I don't know how to write properly. Yes, sir. The, the quantity for high store revenue just for MR causes the active third. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right. Okay. Natural monopoly, third store. Now, if it's easier for you to draw MC perfectly elastic, like a straight line across, do it. That's fine. Long as it's below the ATC. ATC is down with sloping, high fixed cost, or high entry cost. Think BG&E. Okay. Yes. How could you get the profit maximizer without it? Uh, okay. So it just looks like it's like grayed out. Ah, sort of. uh, I hear you. Sorry. Take note: if you do the socially optimal, you're going to be losing money. So the government usually subsidizes that. Fair return. Zero economic profit, but they can make accounting profit. And notice these are prices, right? It's the socially optimal price, it's the fair return price. Sam? How do you find the deadwood loss in that from an All right. So I'm going to my profit maximizer, right? Up to demand, down to MC, and back to my profit maximizer. Like, by the way, if they asked you, Sam, to, to draw this with deadweight loss, it really would make it easier for you to do if your MC was perfectly horizontal. But either way, you can do it. So you're saying go up to demand where MR equals MC. Yeah. Along to where MC equals demand and then back to your profit now. Yeah. I'll, I'll actually draw it because it's, it's kind of. Um, would that be? Did I write loss? Oh, no, I don't like that. Hold it. No. At hold it. Yeah, that should be better. Do you want it again? <laughs> All right. From here, here, here. 
it, it really should be on that yellow line. We're doing price discrimination. Is that next? All right. Now, guys, it's only one graph. I just wanted to show you the difference between a regular monopoly and a price. All you really need to know is this graph here for price discrimination. But a lot of times they show you a monopoly and they say, if this was operating like a price discriminating monopoly, all you do is take the MR out and call it Mr. Dark and there you are. So to the right, to your right is the price discrimination monopoly. That's the only one you really have to put in that box. Remembering no consumer surplus, no dead weight loss, and Mr. Dark is that Mr. Dark is in price discrimination and perfect competition. Otherwise, it's just dark. And it's good to know those because they ask a lot of questions, a lot, like I'd say two or three, that if you know it, it makes the question easy. And if you don't know it, then you're doing a lot of work trying to figure it out. Again, notice much bigger profit and more quantity. Okay, so price is going. And there is no price, right? When NC equals MR, notice there's no price drawn across. Why? Because Mr. Jenkins is willing to pay 20, he pays 20. Sam's willing to pay 50, he pays 50. Andy's willing to pay 10, he pays 10. If they were asking you, what is the total revenue? Here's the total revenue. I don't call it a box, but this is the total revenue. All this is total revenue. Everything to the left of the red line. Okay. Uh, the your food question. Down and then yellow. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. So when we go to find the deadweight loss in a monopoly, the third prong of the area is where demand uses M here essentially. That's like for this one? For all it's all yeah, M C equals M R up to demand to M C and then. Yeah, so it's the area that forms the profit. I'm sorry, the prop the profit box and then the productively allocated the point. So yellow line, green line, black line. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure we're saying the same thing. Okay. And that's good to know. Monopolistically competitive. I'm just going to put in where the X size. I don't know why I put the allocative. Oh, because a lot of people think it's allocatively efficient. It's not. But here is the X size capacity. We're MC. Remember zero economic profits. That's also productively efficient, but it's called excess capacity in the long term. Christopher is here saying, but Mr. Bressler, we're missing some graph. 
Uh, for oligopoly, we only need game theories. You don't need a graph. Flip, flip over to the line right spot. It's Christopher yelling at me, so I'll put it out there with two more graphs. What's missing, Lee? Um, you think about it. Did you have a question? Excess capacity, that's the quantity where MC equals MTC minus the profit. No, it's say where MC equals ATC, draw that down. Let's call that QE. It's a difference from QE to QLR. The difference between the quantity where ATC equals MC minus the profit maximum? Yes. Okay. So it's what you could be producing, Sam, if you were efficient compared to what you are producing. Not the middle thing, right? right. The, uh, the, P the PPC graph and supply and demand. Okay. You're right. I forgot all about the PPC. I figured, like, if you can't graph that one, um, God bless us all. Um, no. How about side by side? I should go over the production possibilities. So let me put that on. Yeah. Jane, did you get the last graph that's missing? You can see that no one's even mentioned that all day for PPC, not getting enough love. You don't have to draw that. The households and uh, that's a good one, though, Sam. All right, here is your monopsony. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take it easy, Victor. Okay, get a little snippy. You know, uh, I blew a great opportunity. We good here? All right. There's your monopsy. When you're done, I'll go over a couple of the points right there. Uh, that'd be fair and everyone could just like MRC, MRC. Okay, no, it is. Oh, really to be MRC or MFC. This is supply. All right, just remember the profit maximizer is MRC equals MR down to supply. The W3 is the actual weight. Now, in both monopsonies and monopolies, they like to say, if this firm was acting like a perfectly competitive, well, that's what a perfectly competitive industry looks like, supply and demand, so it would be perfect competition would be W1 and Q1, that'd be perfect competition. And then the highest a union could get without losing workers 
would be double W2. The regular monotony wage. If you got to take it down to supply. Okay. What is W1? That would be if it was operating like a perfectly competitive firm. Yes. 